Euclidean scales are vertical scales, and although it seems intuitive to say that they are the same as the modes of other scales because of the interval similarities, they are not the same. Lydian scales are linked very strongly to chords, i.e. chord mode, whereas the modes usually associated with them, melodic minor and the like, are horizontal scales and do not generate chords in the same way. So from the point of view of the Lydia chromatic concept, they are different. I think this is important. According to George Russell, the Lydian scale and major scale are two entirely separate and different musical concepts. The scales are generated, more or less, from the chromatic order of tonal gravity, which is given here in its generic form. When taken together, the entire series represents the Lydian chromatic scale. The Lydian chromatic, or LC scale, contains 11 member scales, each of which is chosen, Russell says, for three reasons. A. A scale's capacity to parent chords considered important in the development of Western harmony. B. A scale as being most representative of a tonal level of the Lydian chromatic scale. And C. The historical and or sociological significance of a scale. Obviously C is the major scale, isn't it? Or horizontal scales, in other words. These 11 scales are further divided into seven principal scales and four horizontal scales. The seven principal scales are derived from the Lydian chromatic scale. These scales are given what Russell calls their ingoing to outgoing order in regard to the F Lydian tonic. Ingoing and outgoing may be read as consonant and dissonant, respectively. The principal scales are probably more familiar under different names, which may help in remembering the notes, but remember that vertical and horizontal scales are not the same in Russell's world. The means by which the LC scale generates the seven principal scales is explained in this diagram. Although Russell's explanation of this diagram is somewhat confusing, the term tone order is never defined, except to say that the Lydian scale has five of them, it is unclear why there is no eight tone order. The shaded constant nucleus describes the fact that all of the standard chord types, major, minor, seventh, augmented and diminished, are contained within it. The constant nucleus also provides Russell with an explanation for the missing fifth in the order of tonal gravity. The skipping of the interval of a fifth between the seventh and eighth tones of the Lydian chromatic scale allow the five basic chord categories of Western harmony to be assimilated by its nine-tone order, semi-ingoing level, in the logical order of their development in Western harmony and the Lydian chromatic scale. The other four of the eleven member scales are known as the horizontal scales. For Russell, horizontal is used in opposition to the vertical generation of the Lydian scale. Because the major scale is not a stack of perfect fifths, he considered it to be generated in a different direction. All of the horizontal scales have a natural fourth. Russell only indicates them because of their historical and or sociological significance. The horizontal scales do not, as we shall see, generate chords in the same way as the vertical scales. And for Russell, they exist in a constant state of tension between the false tonic and the true Lydian tonic. Okay, so I think I'll just show you an example of the Lydian chromatic concept. Uh, if you look at this here, we've got a 2-5, basically a 2-5-1. This would be D minor 7, G7, C. But the G7 chord is being changed to a G alt chord. Now, most people on YouTube, in fact, everybody, I don't know anybody who's said anything different, would say, to find the scale of G alt... You go up half a tone, so that would be A flat, and then use the melodic minor scale of of half a tone up, so it would be A flat melodic minor, and it would be used in the seventh mode. Rick Beato says that the G alt scale is the seventh mode, originates from the seventh mode of the melodic minor scale, which is absolutely completely untrue as far as I'm concerned. Right, so the first thing to do, right, just bear that in mind. I'm going to come back to that in a bit. 
But first of all, uh, we need to look at a G out chord, right? I've actually discussed this in my harmony course. So those people who are subscribed to me have watched on the harmony course, we'll have, we'll have an idea. We aren't going into it in great detail yet, but we'll have an idea about alt chords. Now, the thing about alt chords is, is that an alt chord originates from the substitute dominant that was originally played here. So in in the bebop era, the end of the bebop era, you, you hear this kind of lot, kind of, this kind of stuff, a lot in Bud Powell's music. So and obviously Monk and people like that. You would get D minor seven going to D flat seven going to C. Now D flat, just let me write that in. So you would get D flat seven, and that would go to C. Now that's a dotted line because it's a half step down. Now the thing about a half step down is it's not as strong as a perfect fifth movement. And an out chord's got a fifth movement. So what they did is they took the D7 chord basically and they took the sharpened 11th of the tension and put it in the bass and that is a G. So what, a, what an out chord really is, it's D7 right with G in the bass. That's all it is. It's just another shorthand way of writing it. So it's not really derived from the seventh mode of the melodic minor scale, as as you as you will see, it doesn't even make any sense. So let's have a look at this D7 chord written out in music form, okay? Okay, so I've written out uh, the D D flat seven G. This is just an alt chord. This is what it looks like. I put G in the bass, so that makes it an alt chord. This is basically how somebody like Bud Powell would play it. He would see it like this: the sharp eleventh in the bass, and uh, this is the chord. Remember what I said about substitute dominant chords. Substitute dominant chords are non-diatonic chords. Secondary dominants are diatonic. So if you've got a key signature in the secondary dominant chord, you can find out the tensions and that all that way. But substitute dominants are different. The tensions are always a major ninth above any chord tone. So these tensions here are all a major ninth above a chord tone. So the non-diatonic structures it's not you can't say oh d flat goes to g flat so all these notes are in g flat no they're not because it's a it's a non-diatonic structure it's obvious isn't it because you've got a g in you know g there okay so i'll just mention that so uh, i'm going to get rid of this bass line and actually show it you uh as just as the chord and we'll have a look at this uh this a flat uh melodic minor scale okay Okay, so this is the scale that people like uh, Rick Beato, who was actually, st well, was, was actually being taught by George Russell. <laughs> he actually studied, supposed to have studied the Lydia chromatic concept, being taught by George Russell, and yet he actually sees this is the way he sees it. He says that an alt chord, which is just D flat seven with G in bass, is derived from the seventh mode of the, or he says that the scale is derived from the seventh mode of the, the melodic minor scale, so that way from G, won't it? So I'll just put that in the seventh mode. Okay, so I'm looking at uh, the A flat melodic minor scale from mode seven, and as you can see, it doesn't seem to bear any resemblance. I mean, the notes are the same, but from a playing point of view, it's just it just matches the D seven. Uh, stroke G chord does it at all? I've actually got rid of the G and put the. I just want to show you the chord, basic chord. Uh, if you take the seventh mode, you build it up G B flat D flat F. You get G minor seven flat five, which is the se obviously the seventh chord built in a flat melodic minor. Now that don't really have have much to do with that chord D flat seven G, which is an alt chord. I mean the seventh chord, the the minor seven flat five, which this chord would kind of be representing. Or remember, this is non-diatonic. Would be more, uh, would be this basically. It would be F minor seven flat five. It would be this, the top end of this D flat seven. See, that would make more sense. So this chord to me don't make any sense at all. So when you're thinking about an alt chord. You're just thinking about a, a set of notes, you know what I mean? Now, Russell wouldn't really like that, George Russell, because as far as he's concerned, a scale and a chord go together. They're like locked together, you know, these chord mode things. So to him, he wouldn't see that as A-flat melodic minor mode 7, which everybody on YouTube has been talking about. He would see it like this, I think. He would see it as one of his scales, the D-flat Lydian flat 7th, right? 
So GL becomes this. Now, if you look at this, it's just beautiful, isn't it? I mean, you've got the chord there, the original alt chord, which is D, D flat 7 with the G in the bass. If you see players like Bud Powell and that, who were who, who obviously influenced by George Russell, because remember, George Russell came out with the Lydia Chromatic concept in 1946 while he was in St. Joseph's Hospital, right? Uh, suffering from tuberculosis, if, if you've seen my early videos in this series. And uh, he was spreading the ideas all round with, with musicians. And Bud Powell, in his playing, he does come out with stuff that is very much like the Lydian chromatic concept. And this is how Bud Powell would approach this chord, this alt chord. Uh, he would play it with... He'd be playing basically D flat, Lydian flat seventh. That would be the scale. Do you know what I mean? And, and you'd see a G in the bass. Now, if you look, building this up from D flat, it's just beautiful. See, it fits. It's just that chord. It just fits beautifully. Now, some of you who are not very nice about George Russell, who are anti George Russell, would say, well, that is just the fourth mode of the melodic minor. It's just good at that. They would say it's just the fourth mode of A flat melodic minor, which is true. It's it's very interesting that the fourth mode of a of melodic minor, when you build it up with the tensions, you do get this chord exactly with the tensions, right? Just so happens. Now, people like Jeff Bren would say that's better. That's that's part of the tradition of music. But yeah, it's good. But you're still thinking the fourth mode, so. You see in a chord, D flat 7 with G bass, which is an alt chord, right? That's how you, you should be really be thinking about it. And you're thinking, oh God, what is it now? Let me think. Uh, D flat 7, G. I, 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 oh, I've taken the G then in the bass, go up half a step, so I've got A flat melodic minor. And then it's the fourth mode of that A low. You know what I mean? It's just comp it's, it's over complicating it to me. People say that the Lydian chromatic concept's complicated, but in this respect, it's actually a lot simpler, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's very, very easy to see what an alt chord is, because an alt chord is basically just the chord, a, a half step above the chord it's going to. So G is going to C, what's above C, D flat, 7. And then you've got the original bass in the key, that's easy to know. And then D flat, Lydian flat, 7th chord is just a mix of Lydian uh, scale with a raised fourth. It's very simple to me. I, I just to me it's a no-brainer that to think D flat Lydian flat seventh on a alt chord is just so much better than thinking half a step up from the root and you've got the melodic mind, then it's a seventh mode, you know. So I thought I'd just just let you look at that and have a think about it. Uh I also want to say that some people have been complaining that I'm going a bit slow in this series. Well, I haven't been, for a start, I haven't been very well, so I haven't been putting videos on. But, you know, uh, some people have said that this is impossible. Rick Beato, somebody asked him to do a series on uh, the Lydian chromatic concept, and he says it's basically impossible because it's a book. Don't ask me to make a video on the Lydian chromatic concept since it's a book. And you can't make videos on books. You know, which I just don't understand because you can make films out of books can't you what's harry potter you know uh so so i'm i'm going at a nice steady pace because i want people to understand and i'm i'm going on a lot about tonal gravity and i'll be talking even more about it because it's really the main thing in russell's book and i want you to be able to think about it and you make your own mind up we'll go we'll get into scales and all this speed stuff later on because it is the linear chromatic concept if you use it right it is really fast it's faster than berkeley i'm telling you now because i've done berkeley harmony and it's faster uh, so I'll, I'll leave it at that let you have a listen to it and see what you think okay